Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the third installment on the topic of Kaspersky Unified Monitoring and Analysis Platform, or Kuma. In today's edition, we are going to talk about working with events and more specifically, the search filters. So in today's discussion, we are going to have a look at primarily how we can go about searching and specifically filtering our specific data that we have received inside of Kuma. So the first thing that we're going to do, we are going to make sure that we open up the event tab or the events tab. And before, uh, before we actually start searching, we need to select the storage where the events will be searched. That's our first step. And then secondly, choose the time of the search period. So you can select a ready-made option or select any particular period that you have in mind. Now, once we move on to the search for the events, the first option to search events is the SQL request constructor. It is going to show us the structure of the request itself. Firstly, in the select graph, we select the field we want to have displayed in the search results, and then we can speak uh, we can pick any specific fields or click the star to select all of them. Secondly, in the where graph, you can add search conditions. For example, events where the vendor is, uh, for example, Kaspersky Lab or, or whatever other vendor it may be. So we're going to then search by the device vendor field. So I select the device vendor and we'll choose the equal operator. So the equal operator is basically just going to help us to say that I want specifically this particular field. And then on the right field, enter Kaspersky. So we are searching specifically then for the vendor Kaspersky based on our selection on the equal operator and device vendor field. So then we can go one step further to say that we want to group by the graph, right? So group by is a selection option and we can select graph and then events are grouped by a certain field, but we don't need this for our particular search. Additionally, in the order by graph, the results will then be shown for timestamp uh, in descending order. In the limit graph, we are going to enter the number of events to be shown in the search results. So then we're going to click on the apply button and the constructor automatically generates a query based on our selection that we have um, already created. Right. And in this case, it should be something like select from events where device vendor equals Kaspersky and we order it based on the timestamp and description limit is going to be 250. You can also add and exclude values in the event table by clicking the value and selecting an option. For example, we can search for events without EDR. So we remove the EDR product, correct? So next up, you can open up an event card and add or exclude a value. For example, we can select source asset ID as PC-2. Um, and in this case, KWTS, where we are going to have Kaspersky Web Traffic Security, and we add PC-2. You can also use the search bar to create a query. So, for example, to remove source asset ID, um, such as what is displayed on screen. Additionally, we can press Control plus Enter to search, of course. To avoid constantly having to search manually, we can select the frequency of particular updates. So during the search, you may also need a radar to see the number of events on a particular timeline. So you open up the radar and then from there you can move ahead. If there are columns that don't have important information, you can either move or hide them so when you move or hide them, this will obviously based on, be based off of your preference. So once you are completed with that step, you can just save this as a preset. All right. Now you can save the filter for the query so you can use it again later at 
a single click basically. All right. One last addition to this particular portion is that you can export selected events. Now you can export this as a TSV file. You can conduct a retrospective audit that can help identify and generate alerts. And you can view statistics by field. For our second part of the conversation, we're going to look at the different operators. The first one is going to be like. So the like operator lets you search substrings with a case sensitive query. Here's where, we'll, where we will search events where device vendor equals Microsoft. So this would typically be select from events where device vendor like, and we can just add percentage and ICRO percentage. So of course, ICRO is the middle part of Microsoft. And then we can order by based on the timestamp again and proceed uh, as well. However, there is also a secondary option called I like. And I like does not consider the case, right? So it doesn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase, which is particularly convenient when searching by source event. So our query will typically look like select from events where device vendor I like, and then in this case, percentage micro, but lowercase or lowercase, and then percentage. So in this regard, it's not going to be concerned about the case, if it's uppercase or lowercase. It's actually a much broader term to use for our search string. For the third one, we can add an additional condition. So in this case, it can either be and, or, or, right? <laughs> so in this case, we can search for events where, for example, device event class ID is 4688. So what this query would look like is select from events where device vendor, I like, and then we have our percentage micro percentage, and device event class ID equals 4688. Right, so you can use OR uh, in a similar fashion, but obviously for something a little bit more relevant. The fourth option here is going to be the IN operator. Now the IN operator is kind of a logical OR, and it lets us search for events where, for example, where device event class ID is 4688 or 4624. So now we have multiple selections, multiple searches, basically, um, for our overall string. So that would read select from events where device vendor I like, percentage micro percentage, and device event class ID in. And then that in part is where we are going to select our multiple different, um, let's say, renumerators and so on. So 4688, 4624, and there we go. Right. Now, of course, the search also has other functions. So if we have a look at them, there is another option, for example, to say count. So if you have count, this can help us to count the number of events for various different products. So remember that here you need to group um, everything by the device product field. You can also use as to set an alias for a new column. So for example, that would read select count ID as count number uh, or num. Um, and then we can separate that say device product from events and we, gr we, we group device products and we order it based on the count num, right? Additionally, you also have in subnet, uh, which does a very similar thing, but this is obviously dedicated to subnet masks. So that would typically read select from events where in subnet device address, and then we define a subnet address. So in our case, we can use 10.68.85.50 slash 32. 
And then the third one, this one gets interesting. So if we check out how to use the extra field. So to search by key in the extra field, we use a uh, operator called visit param has. All right, so ver visit param has. So this means that we can select from events where visit param has, and then we select extra and we specify local port. Right, now remember, if we, if we think about the previous search query, it's going to be a subnet mask, and then now we're adding a local port to that search, right? So in this case, now we are filtering it down, right? And then finally, we can add the search value of visit param extract string. So this is where we're going to go select from events, where visit param extract string, and then we can say extra local port, and we define or equal 56256, for example, right? So here you will have an opportunity to then go ahead and really go deep into the actual search string and search query that you would need to make use of um, for this particular request. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, and that is the conclusion of our third entry into our series on Kuma. Hopefully this has been an insightful and enlightening session. We hope to see you in the next one. Thank you once again for joining us and goodbye.